Welcome back. The RCMP's watchdog has found the force racially discriminated against the mother of 22 year old Colton Bushy. Bushy was killed in August of 2016 after driving with friends onto Saskatchewan farmer Gerald Stanley's property. The watchdog found parts of the RCMP's investigation were professional and reasonable, but it called the way the officers told Debbie Baptiste about her son's death insensitive. It also found the force mishandled witnesses and evidence. RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky accepted the racial discrimination finding along with others. Still, Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations Chief Bobby Cameron had strong words for the commissioner. Brenda Lucky, what are you going to do? What are you going to do rather than just saying we agree with what's been found? Big deal. Brenda Lucky, do something. The family is calling for those officers who mistreated Debbie that day to be terminated. You can start by doing that, Brenda Lucky. Eleanor Sunchild is a lawyer representing Colton Bushy's family. She's with us from Whitecap, Dakota First Nation in Saskatchewan. Hi there, Ms. Sunchild. Good to meet you, and thank you for making time for the program. Hi, nice to meet you too, and thank you for the invite. From your perspective, how significant is the finding that the RCMP racially discriminated against Ms. Baptiste? Is very significant because Debbie Baptiste and her family have stated right from the start of this case, from the moment that Colton was killed, that they were treated with racism and discrimination. It's good that there was a finding of discrimination on the night when she was uh, given the death notification. I know also that, that even the media releases and the way that they came out from the RCMP had a direct impact on the Bushi family. Can you tell us more about that? I'm sorry you broke up there. Uh, my apologies. I was going to say that uh, I know you've spoken before about how the media releases, and it was examined in this review as well, the media releases uh, throughout this event from the RCMP also had a negative impact on the Bushi family. And, and can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, the initial press release from the RCMP spoke about uh, an investigation that seemed to center around property crime and not that of a murder. And right from the start, especially in Saskatchewan here, we saw uh, all kinds of excuses made for the killing of Colton. We still see that today, even in the comments in the, on social media sites that he deserved to be killed. Uh, it perpetuated this stereotypes that Colton was a thieving, drunken Indian. And that how it, that's how it played out uh, from that moment. So part of what the RCMP has agreed to do to rectify, for, ex for example, that specific matter is uh, have a, an Indigenous person review the releases before they go out. Does that go far enough for you? No, it doesn't. Not at all. Why not? Well, oh, Debbie's here. Can she join us? Please. Yes. Thank you. Take care, Debbie. Hi. Sorry, it's been a very hard day today. Um, I can imagine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. No, it doesn't go enough because uh, how is that writer supposed to know all of the all of the facts regarding the case? Uh, it needs to go more than just having more Indigenous staff on the RCMP. Miss Baptiste, is it okay if I ask you a question about about that and and more specifically the gov the the RCMP's response? They've accepted the finding that they racially discriminated against you. What do you want to see them do about it? I want them to make some changes for um, the court system, within the court system, that this, this discrimination don't continue any further. The RCMP sat on this report, and this is a question to either of you, for a year. They had it in their hands for a year before releasing it. The government says that that's unacceptable. What does it say to you? Ms. Baptiste, if I could start with you, what does that say to you? It says that it's pretty racial and discriminated against me and Indigenous people like me. And Ms. Sunchild, what, what did that tell you? And is there, is there something the government should be doing to, to, to fix that? It told me that the report was scathing and uh, we were right it uh, seemed that the RCMP sat on it. Uh, perhaps they were um, trying to figure out what to say. I recall 
Uh, at one point, Brenda Lucky didn't uh, even acknowledge the existence of systemic racism within of the RCMP. There needs to be what there needs to be is an independent civilian oversight body created that has jurisdiction over the RCMP with the power to investigate complaints by racialized persons and that has the power to lay charges. At this moment, the CRCC has no power to lay any criminal charges, nor do they have any power to enforce the recommendations that were made. They need to enforce these recommendations. The government needs to enforce them. They need to create some kind of body for accountability, and there has to be a timeline put on it as well. Ms. Baptiste, I saw you nodding there. Uh, when Ms. Sunchild was talking about creating more accountability, the government needs to do that. I know that the government has talked about what, what happened to your son and said that there, there needs to be changes made. What are your conversations? Have you, have you had conversations with the government about this? Has anyone assured you that the kind of change you'd like to see will actually happen? Nobody has assured me anything. And how does that make you feel? Discouraged. There's a lot of politicians who watch this show every night. What's your message to them right now? Wake up call. We need a change. Time to start listening to Indigenous people. And we say there's discrimination going on within a police force. Step up and do something. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I want to thank both of you very much uh, for making the time for our program tonight. And uh, I do very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's Debbie Baptiste, Colton Bushy's mom, and Eleanor Sunchild, the family's lawyer. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.